So we have a class here called test service, which has a method. Then you want to call this method from another class called app component. What's the easiest way to do this? Well, the easiest way to do this is to create an instance of the class and then call the method yourself. So let's say I have a constructor. And here I can say test service. Let's say let SVC equals new test service. And with this, we have an instance of the service. And you can call the method SVC dot print to console. Simple, right? But here's the problem with this method. If you use this approach, you're basically binding yourself to this class. When the app component is instantiated, this is the only class that it can possibly use. So you have to have this ready for us to execute this. It's not a big deal. It's part of your code base. So whenever you have the app component, you have the test service as well, right? Well, technically, yes. But imagine if test service were something that made a network call for instance, rather than this method being a print to console, it's maybe get API response. Okay, now your component requires the API to be ready in order to execute, in order to do anything, in order to construct, in order to call methods on top of and all that stuff. This becomes a pain when you're testing it. When you're testing, you wanna be able to create a mock service instead. There's no way you can do this now because your code has hard coded to use test service. So this is not ideal. The second disadvantage to using this approach is test service might need some other services in order to do its job, right? We are gonna look at the way in which you can have services depend on other services. You don't wanna have each service be self-sufficient. You wanna be able to modularize it, split it into various sub services, and then they can be reused as and when required. So if the test service is, has a constructor which take, you know which initializes another service, now if you have this nested hell of, of creating objects, objects creating other objects and so on, and you have this never ending chain of dependencies that you need to fulfill in order to get even a single class up and running, that can be painful. This is the reason why there is a really cool pattern called dependency injection, which is used in a lot of different languages and programming frameworks to initialize classes and set them up. The idea of dependency injection is when you have a class that's dependent on another class, you don't have the class create that instance and you don't have the class look up that instance by itself. What you do instead is have the class declare its dependency and have the dependency injected. What do I mean by that? Let's say you have app, so app component and you know when you're writing your code that app component needs test service. Imagine if you could somehow tell the framework that it needs this particular service, right? And somehow the framework were to look at this line and say, okay, now this app component needs the test service, so let me provide it to you. So this, the framework, the runtime, the container handles the creation of these objects and then injecting them into your component. So this is what Angular does as well. When you're writing code in Angular, you don't have to create an instance of a service. You can somehow tell Angular that you need an instance of the service and Angular magically hands over an instance of that service to you, all right? So let me get rid of this stuff. You don't need to do this. Now, how do you tell Angular that you need an instance of a service? Well, think about how we've been giving clues to Angular about stuff so far. We've been using annotations. Can we use an annotation to tell Angular what services we need? Well, not quite, because here's the thing. If you were to tell Angular what annotation it needs, Angular says, okay, I'm on it. I'm gonna create that instance of the service if I don't have, already have one, and I'm gonna give an instance to you. But here's the thing, Angular is gonna get that instance to you and it's, it's gonna wonder, now how do I hand it over to you? How do I give that service to you, app component? I've created the service, where do I hand it over to you, All right? So in order, for, in order to allow Angular to give us an instance of the service, the convention is to create an argument to the constructor, which is of that type, okay? So we've looked at no arg constructors so far for our components. Whenever we have created a component, the a constructor has been pretty simple, almost always nothing with no arguments here. 
Now suppose I were to give Angular some help by telling, okay, I'm gonna give you a placeholder here. I'm gonna say SVC colon test service, all right? So this lets Angular pass in an instance of the service when it's creating this object through the constructor. You know that an app component is created by Angular, right? An instance of the app component is created by Angular whenever Angular sees the selector in the HTML. So when Angular creates that instance, when you tell Angular that you need test service, well, here's a way in which it can hand it over to you. It creates that object, it has to run the constructor. So it's gonna inject the instance of your requirements, whatever services you need, it's gonna pass it over here. And then you can save this in your member variable or local variable or whatever you wanna do. You have a copy of the test service now, right? It's fairly simple, right? You're providing Angular a way to hand over an instance of the service to you, and you have a way to use that instance in order to call methods. Now this, as it turns out, is good enough for Angular to do two things. One, to inject the service, you know, it has a way for you to hand it over the instance, but then this is also good enough for Angular to know what are the services you need in the first place. So rather than create this other annotation to tell Angular what you need and then provide a placeholder for Angular to give it to you, this placeholder serves two purposes. First, it tells Angular what you need, and then it also gives Angular an opportunity to hand over that instance to you. So all you need to do to declare a dependency on other services is to just create constructor arguments. Angular is gonna look at the constructor of all your components once that have the add component annotation. Whenever a component is being created, it's gonna look at the constructor, it's gonna look at the constructor arguments, and it's gonna see if any of these arguments are injectable, if they are services. If they are services, Angular is gonna find an instance of that service, it's gonna create one if it doesn't find one, and then it's gonna pass that into the constructor when this component is being created. It does this for all the components in your application. Whenever it needs to create an instance, it's gonna check the arguments of the constructor and it's gonna provide those things. Now you can hold on to those services and call whatever methods you please, right? So in this case, I'm gonna to print to console, got the service, and now I'm going to run an ng serve and let's see if this gets the service and prints out this message to the console. Refresh the page. You see here, it has got the service and it has sent the string to the service. The service has taken that string and printed it to the console. So this is a great way for you to write utility methods or other shared business logic that are needed across multiple components. Create the service with those methods and whichever component you need the service, all you do is create constructor arguments and uh, provide the type of the service that you need. Angular is gonna figure out that this is a service, an injectable type, and it's gonna provide it for you, then you can hold on to it. Before we wrap up, I'm gonna mention one common pattern that we tend to use when something like this happens. You just don't want the service to exist for the duration of the constructor and then get lost. You wanna hold on to this as a member variable. So you create a member variable and then assign this value to that member variable in the constructor, or you can use the TypeScript shortcut, private. What this shortcut does is create a member variable inside this class and also assign this input argument to that member variable. So it does all this in one line. So this is an equivalent of doing something like this. Private SVC, test service, and then here doing this dot SVC equals SVC. Instead of doing all this stuff, you can just put a private here and then get rid of all this. All right, now in this case, I can do a this dot SVC so that I'm referring to the member variable rather than the method argument, but in the, in the scope of this constructor, they're both exactly the same. 
If you want to learn more about this shortcut, definitely check out my TypeScript basics course where I go over some of these handy shortcuts that are going to be helpful when you're writing Angular code. But for the scope of this course, for the scope of this tutorial, this is how you do dependency injection. You establish a dependency and have Angular inject it for you. And this is how you get instances of services in your component.